bill is a great economic development tool. Uh, research demonstrates that for every one dollar a low income worker earns above and beyond his salary or her salary, $3,500 generates through the local community. This is a living wage bill and um, Bishop Miles is on the, our panel to describe its history, but it began in this city nationally with the built organization called New Orleans United in Leadership Development in 1993. That effort led to uh, the first living wage bill in the United States and it uh, was adopted in 1994 and still in effect. And it says that any service contractor doing business with the city of Baltimore, like custodians, uh, parking attendants, tree trimmers, etc., uh, must uh, must hire and pay living wage. So that was the first in the nation. Many have been enacted since then. It began here. It's a small population benefiting from the current living wage legislation. This spreads that net farther into the community. There are 17,000 people working in retail in Baltimore City. All of them are not under, are not below living wage, but many of them, about half, are. Um, what is living wage? As defined by Bill originally and carried forward by the city government in its own uh, legislation. Living wage is the poverty level as established annually by the federal government for a family of four. So it's poverty, but it's poverty for a family of four, and right now it is $22,025 a year. If you divide that by 2,080 hours of full-time work, you come up with an hourly wage of $10.59. That's living wage. In this legislation, however, employers who are covered may deduct up to $2 an hour from that $10.59 if they use those $2 to pay for employee benefits. So it may end up being, for many, $8.59 an hour, but that employer is paying that, that other $2 for employee benefits. Who does it affect? It affects large retailers in the city of Baltimore, current and coming, who gross annually at least $10 million in income, and that, and by the way, that's 205 singular solo locations in the city right now. There are another 651 locations that may or may not be part of larger chains. And in that case, the $10 million can be computed by reason of the, um, ownership, uh, the corporate ownership and corporate affiliates of the local store. So the potential is 856 locations possibly in the city of Baltimore that will be affected. In Baltimore, $12.65 an hour is the average wage for retail workers. So, 10.59 is the ballpark. There are 16,173 retail employees in Baltimore. I said 17,000, but that's the exact number for the latest statistics. Um, half of them about, at least in Maryland, where we have the numbers, are below living wage. And those are generally retail workers in, who are cashiers and salespersons and the like. Where living wage or higher wages than the minimum federal and state have been adopted, um, it has shown no significant impact 
your way of employment in the city, in the cities, ever. And there doesn't seem to be a loss of large retailers from those cities. San Francisco, for example, and Santa Fe both adopted in 2003 what we would call living wage legislation. And um, three years later, the University of California at Berkeley did a study. And just to give you one example and chart out of that study, when San Francisco adopted its living wage in 2003, it kicked in February 2004. Uh, and by the way, that covered every employer. Ours covered only large retail employers in Baltimore. When they adopted that, there were 207 large retailers in San Francisco. Large retailers, when I say that, it means uh, retailers uh, annually uh, listed by the National Retailer Association, who are the top 100 retailers in the United States by income. 207 of these were in San Francisco three years later when the University of California Berkeley did the study. Um, there were 241 locations. So there was a gain. Statistically not significant, but it meant a lot of other people who were shopping. I've already cited the impact on the local economy of an extra dollar an hour. And in retail, a large majority of the workers live here in the Baltimore City. Bishop Miles will say, I'm sure, that when we originally started out to replace in Baltimore our lost manufacturing jobs, which paid well if you were a hard worker and willing to work, we were losing them. We replaced them with tourist industry jobs. And the ministers found out, are you going to say this? I'm not going to take it wrong. People worked one, two, three jobs and still showed up at the pantries unable to support their families. That's where living wage began, in the, in the churches, synagogues, uh, and vestries of the city. And that's where it rests each day in large regard.